Back when I was a teenager, I read a webcomic where characters lived on a flat triangular platform, and I thought, I'll make my own flat world, and it will be square. But I didn't like the idea of it just hanging in space, so I added a pole, and then I added a second platform, and a dozen tiny suns, and then I abandoned that idea because my creation felt aesthetically displeasing to me. But my thoughts have recently returned to flat worlds, and I have some better ideas, so I'm going to do some rebuilding, at least for the duration of one video. Why stop at a square when the platform could be a dodecagon? I'll make it 400 kilometers across and add a hole in the center, and the pole is shaped kinda like a barrel hinge and connects like this, so the platform can spin on its axis. I need somebody to spin it though, so I'll give that job to a cosmic eel. It can eternally swim through the air in circles, dragging the world along with a rope and completing a full rotation every 24 hours for everybody's convenience. If you are wondering what would happen if you traveled up along the pole, then the answer is you'd eventually come up from the bottom of that same pole, because space loops in that direction. I'll attach a much thinner pole across it, space loops in this direction as well, and I'll use that second pole to hang an artificial sun, which provides both light and warmth. On the ground, night falls when the artificial sun is eclipsed by the pole. If you live right next to the pole, you'll live in the shadow for 10 hours every day. But only 50 kilometers away, night is only 2 hours long. And closer to the edge, it's less than an hour long. Which is similar to the long summer days experienced in the polar regions of Earth. If you climbed up onto the horizontal pole, you'd have the ground slowly spinning underneath you and you could then lower yourself down any way you want, or you could set up a transportation system, with train cars being dragged along the ground in a circle, with one train always arriving at midday and another one at midnight. But the platform never stops spinning, so the train cannot stop to wait for people to get on board. It takes 24 hours for the platform to spin all the way around its axis, so 20 kilometers from the pole, the train travels at 5 kilometers per hour, which is basically walking speed. So getting on board is pretty easy. You can't get anywhere quickly, but it's still useful if you have heavy goods to transport or just don't want to walk. 50 kilometers from the pole, we are at 13 kilometers per hour. 100 kilometers away, it's 26 kilometers per hour and close to the edge of the platform, it finally reaches a more decent speed, at 52 km per hour. Since it never stops, people could jump into open cars from a platform, or maybe slide down a rope, while non-fragile items could just be thrown in, and then thrown off at their destination. Also, when I look at the drawings of that square world I had created, I see bulky leggings, sweaters, and this girl keeps wearing this dress with a dark color, so I'll have two fibers available, flax and wool. Women and girls wear simple linen dresses with contrasting color colors, while men wear linen tunics and baggy trousers. But the light source is not that warm, and the world is a bit chilly, so woolen sweaters are worn a lot, and woolen socks and leggings are an option as well. Which means that there are meadows full of sheep, so there could be sheep cheese around as well. Maybe that's one of the things that gets transported on the slow trains. And the central portions of the platform are always the furthest away from the sun, and are shaded from the sun for the longest amount of time. So the center is very sparsely populated, most people live closer to the edge, and the platform slopes inwards a bit, so all water flows towards the center, and the area around the pole is all lakes and swamps. And the one thing I still like about the world I had created as a teen is the way magic works. The platform is made of a special rock. If you threw a piece of it at the pole, a little blob of magic would come into existence. In its raw state, it's pitch black and does not reflect any light, and if you want to use it, you need to have it engulf and absorb a body part of yours. 
then that bit of magic is truly yours, and you can reshape it into the engulfed body part with your mind, or have it take on a custom shape, or have it fly around. And if you are an experienced magic user, you could form it into an eyeball that you could then send out and see anything you want to see, or an ear that could listen to anything anywhere. The only catch is that you will not necessarily be able to gain control of that bit of magic, in which case the body part that you sacrificed will still be missing, but the magic will remain a useless blob. My black coloured magic now has a nicer home, so I'm going to stop here, because if I didn't, I would end up spending the next few months very preoccupied with what sorts of mushrooms might grow on my flat world.